release of that body camera video showing what happened leading up to Tyree Nichols' death, it sparked a conversation about violent videos and mental health. Now, it's hard to avoid those images, but research shows the exposure and frequency can take an emotional and even a psychological toll. Fox Carolina's Arthur Mondale goes in depth on the risks and those factors. Arthur. A lot to unpack here. Take a look at this tweet from Bernice King, the youngest child of the late Dr. King, who wrote, You don't have to watch the video of Tyree Nichols. You don't have to subject yourself to that trauma. It's a response we heard from a local activist and an expert on the topic is not only despicable, it's criminal. This is not the first or last time you'll see this coalition rallying for better public safety and trust. We want to raise consciousness and let, let people know that uh, people care. Consciousness about police brutality and the need for change following the death of Tyree Nichols. It requires a reevaluation and a change. And it's to the point people like Zabraylin Woodruff can't even watch the evidence that's dissected endlessly online, on social media channels and on TV. Personally, uh, as a black male, I am not comfortable watching any more of these videos because it reflects, uh, I see myself in them sometimes, I see my brothers and I see any black male or my friends. It creates trauma. It creates compound trauma. Universal Therapeutic Services CEO Tiffany Parker says compound trauma or screen trauma is complex and can come from hearing or seeing a traumatic situation repeatedly. There are people watching everywhere. It's almost like layers of a cake adding on top of the next. Tiffany Parker says people seeking clinical treatment peak within her upstate office during the summer of 2020. I cannot watch that video. Which leads us to other mental health conditions related to viewing violence repeatedly. Post-traumatic stress disorder and race-based traumatic stress. At this point in time, we feel rage. That rage is a paralyzing rage which verges on an explosion. Human rights activist Afia Wangaza is detailing what experts call race-based traumatic stress. What researchers say spans slavery, life after slavery, the enforcement of Jim Crow laws, and some issues in modern day policing in the U.S. All lives will not matter until black lives matter. Research from Mental Health America shows this type of trauma can lead to anger, depression, and hypervigilance. But Parker cautions the images related to the death of Tyree Nichols can affect all people in the form of post-traumatic stress. Now, there's a ripple effect. Parker points to post-traumatic stress following 9-11. Folks didn't want to take a flight. Folks were scared of going into a high-rise building. Parker says if you're constantly feeling negative emotions or physical responses are changing, it's time to filter your settings on your devices. Because that's what we do. We associate right to, to, to really connect and, and feel and, and I cannot watch that. This group says even seeing it once shows the need for legislative and cultural change. People are grieving. Now, data from the National Alliance on Mental Illness finds depending on where they work, between 7 and 19 percent of police officers experience symptoms of PTSD. Parker wants to partner with upstate law enforcement who also need support. To learn more, just visit our website. Arthur Mondale, Fox, Carolina News.